So as I promised, today we are going to be talking about relationships. I made it play in the diagram, in the um, uh, in diagram I created here, you can see how the relationship works. I'm going to explain one or two of these relationships to you, and then I'm now going to allow you to figure out the rest. Meanwhile, all of them has been done, but try to take some time to understand how it works. So let's go to the classes. I'm going to shift this this way. Let's look at the relationship between, let me first close everything, let me close all. Let's look at the relationship between, let's say this person here and the country, okay? So what we have here, or let's, let's, let's take an easy one. Let's look at the country and the state, okay? So a country belongs, a state belongs to a country, right? So we have a relationship between a state and a country. One country, many states, right? So it means that in the states, we need to specify the country the state belongs. So in the, in the state object here, we have to specify the country here. And once we specify the country, we also specify the country ID. Now, if you are specifying the country ID, use all lowercase. Because if you use a camel case or a pastel case, the system will try to deduce what you are trying to do and try to uh, duplicate what this relationship a second time. But if you use lowercase all through, then you are in control of how this relationship actually works. That's my strategy. Some, uh, some, uh, some other people use a different strategy. So the summary is use uh, two variables. We have a country, private country, country, and private country, private integer country ID. If I go back to the diagram here, we have we have, if I go down to state and country, the relationship between the state and the country, we have country and we have the code. But if we go to the state, we now have the country ID, right? And that's what we are trying to explain right here. So in the state, we have the country ID. Now we need to specify the join column that relates the country to the state, or the state of the country is going to be the country ID. And thus, you specify it in the join column and specify this insertable false or detectable false, meaning that the variable or the field that is in control is this country ID and not this one. So we specify here to be updatable and insertable false because this is what actually manages the relationship. So if you use the strategy, it's very clear, and later on, you are not going to run into any problem uh, later on. And again, you want to specify many to one, many countries to one, uh, many states to one country. So we have many states to one country, right? Okay, so this relationship between the state and the country. Now, if we go to the country, we may also want to get a list of all the states that belong to the country. So that's why we may have something like this, a list of states. Now, this is optional. You can actually get this list of states in a different way by using a query, okay? So now what I want to do it this way. If, if I'm doing it this way, it means that I'm going to be using this JSON identity info, and if I go to the other class, you have also JSON identity info here, this is going to solve a problem called infinite or infinite recursion. If you don't use this here, it will work perfectly well and you may not need this JSON identity info if you are not using this. Now, if you have list of states in the country, it's convenient because you can simply say country.states and it will simply give us a list of states in that country. But those states return is going to have a field called country and those country will have states, a list of states and the states will have countries and the country will have states. So this is called infinite regression. And to break the infinite regression, there are two things you can do. Either forget about this completely, take it out completely, and don't use it. Or 
If you are using it, you have to add JSON identity info on both of the classes. All right, so this is how relationship works. Every other relationship in this application works this way. So if we go back to our uh, diagram here, every other relationship works exactly this way. So I'm not going to go ahead to explain all the relationship with you because I've actually explained it once and you don't have to worry about um, uh, for me explaining it one uh, in a different, uh, in every other place uh, for you. So this is clearly how Hibernate or Array works. When we have the table generated, I'm going to now show you how this relationship plays out uh, when it maps the, the two different tables because this table will be generated for us automatically. So I'd like to stop here. In the next part, we're now talking about H2 in-memory database. Let's see how we can generate the database uh, automatically using uh, ORM. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. So please remember to subscribe. This has been informative for you. If you have challenges, please leave me a comment in the comment box below. I remain kind to the tech pro, and we'll see you in the next part.